So you've discovered your passion for photography, but now you're wondering how can I take my passion for photography and make it into a sustainable full-time income? Well, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can take your side hustle, your hobby, and turn it into something that becomes a full-time income and being able to do what you love for a living. Hey, Capasimo Fasa, it's Brendan back with another video. If you guys don't know who I am, my name is Brendan. I am a wedding photographer here in South Texas. And thank you for stopping by my YouTube channel. So if you clicked on this video, then you want to take your photography business full time. So first things first, we need to discuss why you want to do photography full time. What is the thing that is going to drive you and really push you to pursuing full time photography? How do you become a full time photographer? And one of the questions that was really driving me forward was why do I want to do this? I feel like once you answer that question as to why do you want to become a full time photographer, everything else kind of starts to fall into place. Now, personally for me, it was working for somebody else. I didn't see the benefit of working for another company. I wanted to do things on my own terms. And really, it really, really got to me when I was told to do things at a company and I had no say into whether or not I wanted to do it or not. The options were just, you have to do what you're being told to do. Every day that I would go into work, I would just loathe that feeling of being told what to do. And I told myself that one day I'm going to be my own boss and nobody is going to have control over what I do and what decisions I make. And four years later, after starting a photography business, specifically wedding photography, we're finally here where I can make the decisions. And honestly, it feels great. As we're going to discuss in other talking points, it's not easy becoming a full-time photographer. The money is not always there. You're going to have high points and low points throughout your career as a photographer, as a freelancer. And understanding that, but also understanding your why you're doing this, is going to get you through those highs and those low points. If you're getting value from this video, guys, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button because it helps the YouTube algorithm and also helps the YouTube channel grow so more people can see this video and we can help more people. So you've picked up photography and you feel like you've got a hang of it and you feel like you're pretty good at it and you want to start charging. Um, I would say that the first thing that you need to start doing is you need to start doing free work for people, offering your services for free. Now I'm going to get a lot of backlash from this maybe at this point here, but this is how I started. I took pictures of my family, my friends. I offered free photo shoots for my couples. I did anything to get my foot in the door, to get anybody in front of my camera and to build up a portfolio because what's going to end up happening is after you start building up your portfolio, people start sharing your work, start tagging you on social media. One of these days you're going to be sitting there and you're going to get a phone call from somebody and they are going to want to know how much do you charge to do X photo shoot. And that is going to be a culmination of all the photo shoots that you've done in the past. Those free shoots that you did, people are going to see that and they're going to start wanting to pay you for your work. And that's how I got started. I did photos for everybody. I did anything I could possibly do. And one day I got a phone call. And somebody asked, hey, I have somebody who's graduating. How much do you charge for these photos? So when you get that phone call, you're going to have to have an answer as to how much you charge. And it can be whatever you want, really. But the thing is, the second tip would be to structure out a price sheet or a brochure of some kind. Now, pricing is very vague in the photography world because you can have photographers that charge 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, and then you have some that do 50 bucks, 100 bucks. So there is a wide range of photographer pricing. However, what I would recommend is look up what your local photographers are charging. Do market research, see what they're charging. Now, you don't necessarily have to charge what they're charging right off the bat, but that kind of gives you a general idea of what some of the more established photographers in your area are charging. And so once you understand that, you can start building your prices off of that. And 
Once you start doing more and more paid shoots, I would recommend slowly increasing your prices up until the point where you're pretty much with the market as to what everyone else is charging. As to whatever, doesn't matter if you're doing sports, uh, weddings, portraits, finding out what the general market is charging and then either being right at the market or if you wanna price yourself as the highest person there, really the world is your oyster. Do whatever you want. The reason you need to start upping your prices sooner rather than later is because photography is not cheap. Gear is very expensive. Dropping your lights, batteries, SD cards, new bodies, lenses, all of these things start to add up. The C stands are expensive. Everything is expensive. And the sooner you can start charging for your services and charging more for your services, the more you can reinvest back into your company, upgrading your equipment, getting bulkier C stands, um, buying courses, improving your skills, marketing, all of these things are gonna be able to be reinvested back into your company. And that investment is gonna grow tenfold because your marketing is out there, your equipment's out there, your skills are getting better because you're investing in yourself. And that is how you grow your company. Um, you can't do that if you're doing you know, free work or very cheap work. Um, you're gonna have to do a lot more photo shoots, of course. So my recommendation is always to kind of increase your prices through every shoot that you do, maybe increase it a couple bucks here, 10 bucks here, five bucks there, until you get to the point uh, where you're comfortable asking for a certain amount of money for your shoots. Another tip that I have for growing your business or trying to get into photography is, is actually not photography related, but it is learning how to do video, learning how to set up video, audio, lighting. All of these things are super important. Right now we live in an age where TikTok and Instagram are competing for our attention and the platforms are very video focused, video centric. And to try and grow on Instagram now by just using your photos is gonna be kind of hard. It's gonna be very hard to grow organically because Instagram is currently not pushing photos. What they're pushing is Instagram Reels and IGTV, which are video centered platforms. Gone are the days now where it's, Instagram used to be just a photo centered platform. You really gotta dive in and to learn how to shoot and edit videos, especially if you're a photographer, because you also have YouTube out there, live streaming, podcasting. There is a wide variety of things that can happen from you doing video, marketing yourself through video. We as photographers are comfortable taking photos, but video is a different animal. And learning and getting comfortable with it is a skill set that is gonna pay off in the long run. Not only by marketing, but also by offering another service where you can start providing video services to other clients, whether it's weddings, uh, small businesses, corporate videos. So those sort of things can arise from you learning how to shoot and edit videos. So one of these other things to start scaling your income is to start niching down. When you first start, yeah, you're gonna be shooting everything. You're gonna be photographing kids, you're gonna be photographing weddings, portraits, dogs, cars, landscapes, uh, anything to get your foot in the door. But as you start getting more experience and you start finding the things that really you really enjoy doing and the things that you don't enjoy doing, I would start putting the things that I don't enjoy doing and stop doing those type of shoots and start doing more of the things that you do enjoy and really niching down into that category. So for me, I'm a wedding photographer. That's what I love doing. I hate taking photos of animals. I hate taking photos of landscapes. And quite frankly, one-on-one -on -one with a person at doing just portraits is kind of awkward for me. But if I have a couple in front of me, I'm very comfortable doing that. And for me, that is what I enjoy doing the most is working with couples and working with weddings. That is my comfort zone and that's what I feel like I am the best at not so much portraits and everything. And so what I did was I nailed my focus in on what I was good at and what I enjoy doing. And in turn, when you do that and you're seeing as the person who just does landscapes or who just does weddings, you can charge more for that. I want you to think about something. When you think of Taylor Jackson, Sam Hurd, Jose Villa, when I think of those people, when I hear those names, all I think is wedding photographers. When I think of people like 
um, Peter McKinnon, Casey Neistat, I think YouTube, right? These people have niche down the very specific things that they're really, really good at. And that is what you need to focus on because when somebody thinks of your name, what are they gonna think about? And that is what is really important because when they think about, okay, uh, John is really good at taking photos of pets with hats in front of backdrops. He's the pet backdrop hat photographer. You wanna be that person that, that comes to mind whenever somebody needs a specific type of photo shoot is you can charge more. You are the expert in that field. So another tip here that is kind of related to niching down is becoming an authority figure in your area. Now, how do you become an authority figure in your local area? Is by producing content that is helpful to your clients or helpful to other photographers. So if you are a wedding photographer, I would focus on producing content that helps other wedding photographers in your area and also helps out your clients who are getting married. Usually when somebody's getting married for the first time, they have no idea what to expect or what to do. And so by producing content and becoming the authority figure and you're the educator on educating people in your area, people are gonna look at you as you are the person to go to for this type of photography. So if you're a landscape photographer, I would post content showing photographers how to take better landscape photos, like locations to do landscape photos. And then people that are gonna be buying your work, I would educate them on what makes a good landscape photographer versus a bad landscape photographer, you know, what to look for in certain photos, that sort of thing. Educating people and becoming the authority figure in that topic is gonna make you more money in the long run. So this one goes without saying, but it's don't be an asshole. First of all, when you interact with other photographers, if you have the mindset that this is a community rather than competition, you're gonna succeed, you're gonna go further in that aspect. If you treat other photographers in your area as their community, as you, they can help you and you can help them. Now, the other thing about don't being an asshole is treating your clients well. Far too often I hear, photographer never responded to my text, photographer left me on red, photographer forgot about our shoot, forgot who I was, photographer took eight months to deliver my photos. If you treat your clients like they are your only client, you're gonna do well, you're gonna succeed. I know you may have a hundred other clients that are paying you and are asking for photos or, or communicating back and forth with you, but if you treat that one client that at that time like they're your only client, you're gonna do a lot better. And that's the way I try to treat them. I answer immediately, text back immediately. Communication is key. And don't be a jerk about it. Stop ghosting people. It is, come on guys, it's 2021 already. Can we stop, can we stop ghosting people? Especially people that have already paid you for your work. Don't be an ass, just, just don't do it. So something also related to not being an asshole is marketing. Now you can do paid for marketing and that works. There's other, there's websites like The Knot, you know, Wedding Wire, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, that sort of thing. All that paid for advertisement does work. People have good success with it. I've booked a couple weddings from Instagram and Facebook using ads, but I believe the best marketing for your business, your photography business is word of mouth. Now, I know everybody always says, oh, my marketing, I just do my word of mouth, I just do word of mouth, and everybody does it. But do you really capitalize on that? Do you really make your clients feel at the end of the day that they wanna recommend you to their friends and family? If that's the case, then you are doing an excellent job. But if it's not, you are really missing out on an opportunity here to scale your business. The biggest barrier to entry for high ticket items like photography, wedding photography, Paying five, six thousand dollars for a photographer is this trust factor. It's not the skill of the photographer. The biggest drawback that I see is couples are afraid that they're gonna get screwed by the photographer. There's a barrier to break, this trust barrier. And if you can cross that barrier, become trustworthy and gain people's trust, that is what is gonna allow people to pay you for your services on higher ticket items. And a lot of times that barrier is broken down if it's a friend that has referred them to you. If a person is contacting you because of a referral, 
that barrier is already down because they trust you. They've, they know a person personally that you did work for and they were satisfied with the job that you did and they know that they're not going to get screwed by you. So that's why they contact you. They can pick a hundred thousand photographers in the US. There's it's an oversaturated market, but when they go to you, it's because of that trust barrier that is now no longer there. There's no walls up because they trust you because of the work that you've done for other people. So word of mouth is extremely important and underutilized. Really do a great job. Knock it out of the park every single time and your clients will refer you and speak highly of you. And that's a lot of my work is done through couples that I've already shot for and they refer me or other people have seen my work that I've shot for other people and it just it just snowballs. The word gets out that if you're doing a good job, the word will get out and people will come to you. Another thing to look at is what makes you special? What makes you different from other photographers? Because again, we're in an oversaturated market here and photography is growing every day. There's somebody new coming along here. So what makes you special? And really answer that question and really think deeply about it. When you're marketing yourself to your clients, what makes them want to pay you? What makes them want to go to you instead of the other person? And really thinking about that and capitalizing on that is really what's going to take your business to the next level. But we can't complete this video unless we start talking about finances. Now, finances are extremely important because if you want to take your business full time, you really got to get your finances in order. And one of the big things with me is I don't have debt. I was able to take my business full time because I don't have a lot of debt. I only have mortgage payment and other bills like groceries. Uh, electric and water that sort of thing but I don't have credit cards I don't have car payments student loans medical bills all those things I don't have and I made it that way because I am very risk averse I don't like having a lot of risk I don't like having a lot of payments on well, that's only think about that but I would have to do more photography gigs or charge more or, or have to just shoot more in general and make more money to sustain a lifestyle of debt, of paying for cars and paying for credit cards and that sort of thing. I live a very humble life, very pretty humble life, I, I feel, where I don't get into keeping up with the Joneses. I wanna break it to you, but the Joneses are broke. And if you try to keep up with them, you're gonna be broke too. You really wanna start thinking about that. What is worth more to you? Is it looking rich or actually being rich? Um, is it keeping up with a status quo or doing your own thing, not caring what people think. Who cares what car you drive, right? These are the sort of things that are gonna really keep you from going full time. If you really wanna stay, keep up with the Joneses and all that status quo, it's gonna take you longer to dive into this full time. Um, but if you, keep, if you are financially responsible, um, six months of expenses in an emergency fund, keeping your debt very low, if the lower your expenses are every month, the less you have to earn, the less you're going to be out shooting. And the less you're out shooting, the more free time you have to do other stuff. Spend time with your family, go to the beach, go on a vacation, something. But I feel like debt is very, it's not talked about often enough on a lot of YouTube channels uh, that are photography focused. And staying away from debt really is the best decision that I've made. And I've very long time. Uh, I feel like I'm much happier. I'm less stressed out because I'm not worrying about having to make payments, giving my money away to the bank. Personally, for me, that is the best thing to do. I drive an old car. I drive an old truck. It's a 2006 Tundra. It's got like 170 some thousand miles. It still runs. No issues with it. Let's go take a look. So once we get an understanding that you need to decrease the amount of money that you're spending every month, decreasing your expenses, decreasing the amount of debt you have, then we have to understand how much monthly are you spending and how much do you need to earn to meet your bills, put money to savings, that sort of thing. Writing down a list 
of how much you're spending every month and how much do I need to save for taxes and how much do I need to save to invest for retirement? Because again, retirement is also very important. We're all going to retire. Majority of us are going to make it to that age where we're going to have to retire and understanding how much we need to be putting away and investing for our retirement is also very important. So getting all those numbers and understanding what that number is and how can I meet that number every month. And one of the things is by diversifying your income. So maybe if you're niche down into wedding photography, that's one source of income is weddings. But there's also multiple sources of income that you can make from just from those weddings. So you can sell prints to the family. You can make albums, display prints, uh, videos. When we do videos, we can upsell the ceremony footage. We can do style shoots, bridal sessions, uh, mini sessions. And then we can even branch out to things that are not in our niche. Uh, we don't charge as much for those because we're not niched in those things, but you know, corporate headshots, corporate videos, videos for the venues, videos for small businesses. Um, and then of course there's YouTube, there's TikTok, affiliate marketing, merchandise, all these sorts of things are things that we can use to diversify our income. So we're not just relying on solely our niche in photography, which is weddings. We can really diversify and have multiple sources of income coming in to help us reach our monthly goal for income. Anyways, guys, I hope this video helped you out and I hope it got you thinking as to how you can take the plunge into wedding photography. If you like this video, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.